One thing to note about Fazbear Frights number seven is while The Cliffs is the signature story and it features the proper cover art, uh, on the back side, uh, when it lists the, the single sentence summaries of each story, um, The Cliffs is listed as second. That is a minor formatting error. Um, these books suck now, uh, FNAF is terrible, and Scott Cawthon owes me reparations for the pain he's caused. I'm serious. I want Scott Cawthon to pay me $15,000 in damages. I expect it no later than the 7th of the month. A cash check can be made out to Nick Carlson Press, literary critic extraordinaire, but I do prefer uh, non-sequential bills. Single dad Robert grapples with the death of his wife and tries to balance his work with being a good father to his two-year-old son Tyler. With the best intentions, he buys Tyler a tag-along Freddy, a toy that's supposed to uh, monitor the child and send uh, regular updates to the parent's smartwatch about the child's uh, status and well-being. But when Tyler seemingly disappears from the backyard and the toy sends Robert cryptic messages about his whereabouts, Robert feels overwhelmed with life and questions whether life is worth living. When I saw this title with this cover art, I knew we were gonna be in for a dark story. Like one that dealt with themes like despair and suicide, all that good stuff. And yeah, I was right. Um, Robert's a very sympathetic protagonist. His struggles are very real. Uh, the titular Cliffs, uh, their backstory, very grim and believable. The whole sequence where Tyler disappears and the toy keeps telling Robert, uh, why don't you go to the Cliffs? As if telling him to kill himself. Uh, <laughs> It was um, familiar, but inoffensive, um, a, a good sequence overall. But then it's near the ending where things get a little weird. The story pretends for the longest time that Tagalong Freddy telling Robert to uh, go to the cliffs is a veiled message to kill himself, when really it was just giving him a hint about uh, the whereabouts of uh, his son. As much as I was hoping for and expecting a dark story with an unhappy ending, um, I had a feeling that they were gonna pull that little stunt on us, and I was right. Uh, Tyler is safe and sound, having fallen into a little cave on the cliffside. Uh, Robert saves him, and the two walk off into the sunrise back home. Or do they? Yeah, things seem to wrap up too nicely, which makes me wonder if everything from Robert uh, going to the cliffside and beyond uh, happened in his mind, or didn't happen at all, or something like that. Uh, I reread the ending to try and... Uh, confirm or see if I can find any hints, but nothing really stood out as like suspiciously multi-layered. I wouldn't put it past the writers to try something like that, but considering all the other uh, happy endings we've seen in the Fazbear Frights, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, really did choose to end with a nice uh, bow-wrapped anticlimax either. Which I know doesn't really help, but uh... shut up. The Cliffs, um, it was fine, just fine. Um, on the shorter side, too, actually all the stories in this collection veered on the shorter side. Which I'm not complaining about. Next! Reed's robotics class isn't going too well, partially thanks to his bully, Julius, who constantly makes him feel powerless and weak. Until one day after school when Julius accidentally traps himself inside his exoskeleton suit, and Reed, being the only witness, decides to leave him there overnight to teach him a lesson. But the evening takes a monstrous turn when Reed suspects that external signals are controlling Julian's exoskeleton suit, with disastrously painful consequences. This one <laughs> was fucking hilarious, but I mean that in a good way. There is such a deliciously dark humor to this whole concept. The fact that this kid gets trapped in what is basically like a rudimentary spring lock suit, and then he's like tossed around and battered and bruised and his bones are broken, his flesh is torn, he ends up as this like mangled up zombie thing. I mean, <laughs> one of you co-authors unlocked some dark chakra that I do not want to look into. <laughs> The build-up to Reed slowly realizing that Julian's corpse is, like, knocking around outside the house and that his actions are linked to his friend's uh, remote-controlled robot is paced perfectly. And uh, the payoff and ending are uh, legitimately chilling. I later found out the reason for the breaking wheel being featured first on the backside uh, was because it was supposed to be the signature story, but its uh, cover art was rejected at the last minute for being too scary. And yeah, I wouldn't call it uniquely horrifying, but it's definitely much more explicit than the cover art we've seen in books past. 
It is a great cover though. It looks like a pulpy 70s horror comic and I'm all here for it. This doesn't change the fact that the discrepancy still exists, however. I still want my $15,000, Scott. My only gripe with the story is that the way uh, Julius ends up trapped in the Springlock suit is uh, kind of contrived. And um, the story dedicates a good amount of time uh, with Reed's friend explaining that the remote control he's using should not be able to extend very far, uh, much less to the school where uh, Julius is at. And yet that's what happens anyway, with no explanation, uh, scientific or supernatural otherwise. I wish they could have addressed this in a more uh, logical and grounded way, but again, uh, this is Fazbear Frights. And with that said, The Breaking Wheel is definitely one of my favorites. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, next! So, while you all seem to warn me a lot about the Spring Trap Mpreg story, uh, you also seem to warn me about the one with the uh, Fazgu. That's this one. Chris is a little asshat who despises his secure, loving family because they're not wealthy or ambitious enough for his tastes. The kid's like 14. So he joins the school's science club in hopes that it'll prep him for a more lucrative career in his adult years. But membership to the club requires... initiation. Initiation that Chris finds he has to really put himself into. Literally. <laughs> Let's get this out of the way. I cannot remember the last time I read about a protagonist more acrid or despicable than Chris. Uh, the way he looks down on people he deems inferior, his classist attitudes, his comically evil observations, <laughs> it makes doofenshmirtz look subtle. The guy's pure cartoon. It, it seriously makes me wonder whether or not the guy's characterization was like an excuse for one of the co-authors to work out like a suppressed neurosis or something like that. Come on, Ellie Cooper, tell us how you really feel. Tell us your true thoughts on the 99%. <laughs> Come on, I know you want to say it. Come on, judgment-free zone, do it. <laughs> Overall, this story was funny, but not breaking wheel funny, more like uh, the new kid funny. Um, there's just so many logical hurdles you have to jump over to take this story with even an ounce of seriousness. Chris's supervillain traits aside, uh, why wasn't it an automatic red flag when the teacher told the students that they had to pull out one of their own teeth to be accepted into the science club? Are you telling me that not one student reported this to a parent or an administrator? How did this get into the curriculum? How does this make sense? <laughs> uh, it's so silly. <laughs> Also, the Fazgu. Like, what even is this anymore? How and why is Fazbear Entertainment manufacturing what's basically this, like, hyper-reactive stem cell sludge that's so effective that it would make Eldon Tyrell fall to his knees and weep with envy? Why are you putting this shit in a science kit for children? Why aren't you marketing it to, like, the military or some, like, biotech organization? I'm, this is the second time I'm invoking Plankton using groundbreaking technology to steal the Krabby Patty formula in relation to the Faz books. But here we are! I guess the twist ending is pretty cool where Chris's Fazgoo basically absorbs him and the Fazgoo becomes Chris while Chris becomes the Fazgoo. <laughs> Good imagery there, but, um... It's suspiciously similar to the ending to A Lonely Freddy, and now that I think about it, uh, to be beautiful. Maybe I should come up with a condition for this story trope, too. Um, we've had three so far? If it happens one more time, I'll, uh, I'll think of a name, I promise. But overall, <laughs> this story is a giant meme. Uh, not nearly as ridiculous as the new kid, but there are still way too many logical hurdles for this reader. And I don't even want to consider, like, the lore implications of Fazgu. Like, is anyone even themselves in this universe anymore? I mean, what is this? There's like a biohazard waste bin that he passes by like every and day. And at the uh, end, it's revealed office. that Kelsey is some kind of like supernatural undead and entity who just boo. Sam was alive the whole yeah, time. Yeah, things seem to wrap up too nicely. Now back to the Stitch Wraith saga, or I guess we're calling it now the uh, Crap Trap Chronicles. Um. What the fuck happened? 
Crabtrap debuts for like five minutes, and then Eleanor's also there, and she gets sucked into its body, but then she leaves his body, and then the puppet appears, just out of nowhere, and just takes down Crabtrap, and that's that? Is that what happened? At least Jake is back to being the Stitch Wraith, I think, and Andrew is gone, but now Eleanor? Like, the circus baby variant from To Be Beautiful? Now she's the main antagonist of the Stitch Wraith saga? We've gone from the Stitch Wraith saga to the Crab Trap Chronicles, and now we're at the, uh... Eleanor epic, I guess. What are we doing with ourselves? Seriously, what are we doing? We went from, like, a comparably dark and subdued detective story about a mysterious figure going around killing people. And now we're back to the sugar-high Fazbear fan fiction I've grown to despise. Uh, faz fiction. And all this pales in comparison to the fact that I've gotten through seven of these, and I still have five left. Boy, will I have some final thoughts when this is all over. Uh, see you all next time.